As the River Air leaves Castleford, it's entering its lower course. The landscape is very different to the midland upper courses of a river. We are now just a few metres above sea level, and the river still has over 100 kilometres to travel to reach the sea. All around the land is flat. The river channel is now deep and wide. The water volume is high. Discharge is large, but the velocity is low. In its middle and upper sections, the river was powerful enough to carry large fragments in its bed load. But here, in the lower section, energy levels are low, and the river can only carry and deposit the finest material. The river now has a wide floodplain. A floodplain is the area around a river that is covered in times of flood. The floodplain is a very fertile area due to the rich alluvium deposited by floodwaters. This makes floodplains a good place for agriculture. When in low flow, deposition raises the riverbed. As a result, the channel cannot carry as much water. During flooding, water flows over the sides of the channel, depositing more silt or alluvium on the land alongside the river. A build-up of alluvium on the banks of a river can create levees, which raise the river bank. As the velocity of the floodwaters decreases, coarser material is left first on the banks, followed by finer sand and silt, building the height of the levee. During a recent flood, we can see how debris has been deposited on the bank by the river, and it is contributing to the growing height of the levees alongside the channel. In this section of the river, where flooding is a regular concern, the channel is carefully monitored and flood events are planned for. Washlands are an essential part of how flood risk is managed on the river air. In simple terms, when the river levels are high, water enters the washlands and leaves as the river levels fall. Normally these drain under gravity and with the help of pumping stations. Washlands have been around since the Viking period, when marshy areas were known as ings. They were deliberately not built on, so that water from adjacent rivers could be stored naturally during times of flood. More recently, these ancient floodplains have been enhanced by artificial water control measures, so that levels of flooding can be monitored. The River Air has 38 washlands, with a capacity to store 33 million cubic metres of water. As we approach the air's confluence with the River Ouse, the river has become tidal, meaning that twice a day the flow of the river is interrupted as water sweeps up the river valley from the sea. At the moment it is low tide and the water is flowing out. These are the last few metres of the River Air. It is about to join and become another major UK river, the River Ouse. At low tide we can see the fine sediment and mud that makes up the bed load. It is visible on the banks and we can also see it carried in suspension in the river air. The River Ouse formed roughly 100 kilometres away at the confluence of the River Swale and River Ure has passed through the city of York and town of Selby before arriving here. The combined river is now very wide and impressive indeed, as it makes its way towards Goul. Goul is not only the UK's furthest inland port at around 80 kilometres from the sea, it is also the UK's biggest inland port, handling around 1.5 million tonnes of cargo each year. The air and colder navigation rejoins the river in Goul. The navigation is essentially another name for a canal, which provided a much shorter, straighter route for water transport leaving the air at Nottingley, east of Castleford, and missing out the meanders and problems with the tides higher up the river. Joining the Ouse close by is also the Dutch River, which is actually the diverted River Don. The River Don originally joined the River Trent, but was diverted northwards in 1626 by a Dutch civil engineer to aid the draining of marshland at Hatfield Chase. 
12 kilometres east of Goole at Trent Falls, the River Ouse and the River Trent meet and flow into the Humber estuary. An estuary is where the river meets the sea. They are affected by tides, wave action and river processes. As tides rise, rivers can't flow into the sea, so velocity falls and sediment is deposited, forming mudflats. These may develop into salt marshes where the right circumstances prevail. Right by the confluence of the Ouse, Trent and Humber is Alkborough Flats, the location of a managed realignment scheme. It is one of the largest schemes in Europe and is reducing the need for flood defences on the rivers further upstream. Inundation of the flats through a 20 metre breach in the old defences provides a massive flood storage area. It is sufficient to reduce high tide levels by up to 150 centimetres in large parts of the upper estuary. It is also anticipated that the scheme will reduce the impact of rising sea levels and also provide a valuable natural habitat. As it passes under the Humber Bridge, the estuary is now almost two kilometres wide. The Humber estuary drains a catchment area of around 20% of the total land surface of England and has an enormous tidal range, meaning approximately one third of the estuary is exposed as mud or sand at low tide. When the Humber Bridge was opened in 1981, it was the longest single span suspension bridge in the world, connecting the East Riding of Yorkshire with Lincolnshire. Although it has been replaced as the longest by other bridges, it is still a fantastic spectacle. We are now reaching the end of our journey, though there is time for one last geographical feature, a landform actually created by coastal processes. Spurn is an iconic five kilometre long spit stretching across the mouth of the Humber estuary. The southernmost tip is known as Spurn Point or Spurn Head, and is the home to a lifeboat station and two disused lighthouses. Behind the spit is sheltered, and the low energy environment results in sediment being deposited, forming salt marshes. Beyond Spurn is the open sea, the North Sea. And so ends our 210 km trip that started out on a soggy mass on the Pennine Hills. I do hope you have enjoyed these videos. There is a revision video to follow. Thank you for watching.